So hi and welcome, Uma. Thank you, Nanda. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Likewise, uh, I'm really happy that I could we could work out a uh, a time that is convenient to both of us. Of course, I wouldn't <laughs> miss it for the world. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, you arrived in the U.S. Uh, in 1997, is that right? Yeah, I came here on January 4th on a cold, um, a cold day. Uh, St. Louis morning uh-huh. from Chennai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chennai has only three uh, climates, hot, hotter, hottest, right? Yeah, no, the hottest, hottest, hottest. <laughs> <laughs> one day of like, you know, hot. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. So, uh, you did your MS in electrical engineering and then you got on to IT and you were yep. there for uh, 16 solid years, right? Corporate okay. world. Yes. <laughs> wow. Okay. And then something happened. What happened? Well, you know, it, for me, even though I sort of talk about it as, as it happened all of a sudden, huh. um, when I reflect back, it wasn't. You know, I heard my first awakening at the age of eight. My uh-huh. awakening happened at the age of 13. Mm-hmm. And gradually I had this very uh, uh, deep sense of intuitiveness that mm-hmm. I didn't understand at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had an awakening, uh, sort of, uh, you know, I kind of wanted something more. Uh-huh. So I had another awakening in 2006-ish. Mm-hmm. Very mm-hmm. mild one, um, but I oh you know what no it's, it's not a mild one. Um, in two thousand, uh, the the dates and times are a little bit off. Oh, that doesn't matter. That doesn't yeah, matter. Somewhere two thousand two thousand five two thousand six. Right. Um, I actually was able to read people's relationships like that. Hmm. Just came to me, you know. Um, I had three people's marriages that I knew would dissolve even before it dissolved. Hmm. The major one that happened was, you know, just like in New York, we have a big uh, park here in Chicago called Lincoln Park. It's a beautiful summer day. It's, you know, just one of the best days I'm walking. And I hear about my coworker, such and such is going to get uh, separated from his wife. You're going to hear about it on this date. You heard a voice. Um, it see the thing is for me the most challenging part is telepathic for me. It's not a voice. Even oh, I understand. Yeah. So yeah. I was just trying to see if it is a clear audience, as they call it, or is it? Uh, would you say that you developed clear audience? Is that what is that? The, is that the right thing? So my my sister, my younger sister, is clear audience. She okay. hears. Oh, okay. She hears. Uh. It's imprint on my brain, which is also called clear audience. Okay. Uh, but it's it's sort of like, you know, it's sort of like you had to just really pause. Okay. Um, and what happened was when I was in the park, it was a really long sentence. Uh-huh. Such and such is going to separate from his wife and blah, blah. You know, you don't, right. I, I, for a second, I was shocked. And I was like, what the hell just happened? And there was a, you know, park bench, I sat on it. And of course, you know, when you don't have an understanding of it, you go into your mind and you say, you reason with it and you say, I said, what a horrible person you are to think about your friend. And <laughs> this person uh. had an amazing relationship from the outside when people looked at it, you know. Right. Um, you know, but I, I do want to sidestep for a second because, you know, Throughout my spiritual evolution, I'm hearing it's been a very amazing, you know, um, journey for me. Mm. But what I also want to understand is people have to be very careful when they're getting a message. Okay, mm. because mm-hmm. when you're open, you could open any whichever portal you want. Right, right. Anything could be communicating to you, and you have to be really, really careful. You know. Okay. So what happened is at the end of the year, I said, you know what? This is a huge burden for me. I don't mm. want to do this. Mm. You know, whatever this is, take it away from me. Mm. The minute I said it, it disappeared. It never came back. Uh. But for the next six years, I was contemplating on it. Uh-huh. What was this? How did I know? You know, 
but to, uh, just to back up for a second, my friend, uh -huh. exactly on that day, uh -huh. this person came to me and said, I am separating from my partner. Like exactly the date that was given to me. See, uh -huh. that is the thing that is very mind boggling even today. Mm. Okay, so then for six years, I just said, like nothing, you know? Mm. I'm like, just, I did some work and then I just, I was a normal being. But this question of like, where did this information come from mm. was literally on my brain. Mm. Constantly, okay. Mm. So one day I looked back at my life and there was a pattern. Mm -hmm. Every year on August 3rd and 4th, something major would happen to me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it's good. Mm. It is something huge. Mm. Okay, and last year it was my mom. My mom passed away on the 27th. Mm -hmm. And the third was when we had the ceremony, the wake. Oh, okay. You know, I, I don't plan, and I'll be planning on a trip, and all of us are going to fall on the third. Okay. Or, and it happened. Right. And um, August 3rd of 2012, July of 2012, I was, you know, I, to make a long story short, I went and saw, uh, I was pushed literally by something to go and talk to this person. Mm -hmm. And it was an energy healer. So I went into some energy healing and it opened me up. Like it stretched me. Like mm -hmm. literally it stretched me, Okay. That year, August 31st, 3rd, 2012, I, I'm about to leave my home. I get a call hmm. saying, hey, um, would you do, like to do another session? I'm like, hold on to the thought. I'm just literally leaving for my vacation. I was living, leaving for Galapagos. Came back. I had a lot of questions whether I wanted to do this or not. But something said you need to go and do this. Right. Went and did it. It cleared me up. And then one day I was sitting on my couch and I said, dear God, now I now understand you better than ever. Mm. And I now want to understand what love is. Mm. And I went into Amazon and there was a book waiting for me. And it was mm -hmm. the book of love and creation. And mm -hmm. it was channeled text. See, okay. I think that was pivotal to my catapulting of my spiritual journey. Right. Because I would never have touched this book. I would have never even given thought to channeled information being so logical. Right. You know, like, you know, push everything, you put it in the category of psychic. You know, like in those days in the US, they would be constant, you know, yeah, 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 you yeah. want your loved one. Like, you know, all yeah, 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 yeah. a very negative perception of it. Right, right. And instantaneously, I knew I had to read the book and mm -hmm. it changed my life. I understood on a deeper level what love really means. And that okay. it just kept, you know, the ball kept rolling and rolling and rolling. And 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 I'll be honest, for the first time in my entire my entire life, I true truly feel love for myself, my, like I've never felt. Mm. You know, and it's it's a very different place to be. It's a very um, healing and peaceful and calm place to be. Mm. And I, 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 I don't think I can say, oh, of course I want more because I, I live in this human realm. But if I didn't right. have a body, I would be very content. <laughs> you know what I mean? I would yeah, be yeah, very yeah. content. And even now, I think I'm very content. Um, but because we live in this limitation, there's always... We need, physical limit, yeah. we need something, right? So right. Um, what I'm working on right now is literally um, to live off of Earth mm -hmm. and become a sustaining, uh, living in a sustainable, uh, you know, neighborhood. That's what okay. I'm up to creating right now. Okay. So this uh, book that you read, was it by this Paul Selig that uh, author you were talking, who largely influenced uh, Paul you? Paul Selig is the author. Uh, Paul Selig has written about six or seven books. His first book is called I Am The Word. It is the I Am The Word series. 
Right. And it is a phenomenal book. And, and Paul is a clear audience. I really owe my uh, spiritual awakening to him because okay. it just catapulted. It okay. really took me on an understanding of we are here and where we, who we really are uh, in, a, right. in, a, in a universal way. A quantum leap, you would say. Quantum leap, yeah. You know, that okay. is how the thing is, you know, um, we can listen to gurus, we can listen to this, we can listen to that. But true awakening is a quantum leap. Right. It's not a step-by-step -step linear, I learned this and learned this, let me, you know. And we all really, we owe it to ourselves to experience the quantum leap. And that is unconditional love. So for a long time, I thought, I, when, I, when I stepped into the uh, spiritual world, I heard, this is illusion, this is illusion. And I thought, oh, the earth living is illusion, and there's something else. Mm. But what I'm realizing right now is the truth ha that has been projected is the lie. That means they are eradicating who we are as sovereign beings on earth. And it's a very, very important conversation. Mm. No more is, oh, I need to get up and go to work and I need to like feed my children. I'm going to fly. It is not going to fly because we have been tricked. We have extremely high technological evidence that has been suppressed for the common man. I was reading something about um, CE5, which is Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, to break mm -hmm. into a segue into our uh, main topic of uh, discussion today. Okay. All the things about ET that they have been like, oh, you know, ET doesn't exist. People are just crazy. All those things are literally to, you know, to, to, to sort of suppress what mm. people are seeing. This, so we, we, let me go back to the children. You mm. suppress a child at the age of six, you got it. Yeah. Because children can see angels. They can see other beings. That is why they are constantly laughing, they're looking and talking to something, and we're like, oh, it's just a child, it hasn't developed. How mm. foolish of us. Mm. A child is completely developed. Its mm. senses are so open, it mm. can feel all the intangible things in the world. Mm. And then we look at the child, oh, the child has to be taught. There's nothing to teach a, to teach a child. Mm. It is the fullest wisdom that mm. it shows up when it's born. Oh. Yeah. So, what is your take on um, ETs? I am absolutely sure that it exists. Okay. 100% sure. Because if, if this is how I look at it. If, if a person is looking at it like, oh, she's full of shit. I'm sorry, no. no, that's okay. That's fine. Here's what I say. We mm. live on Earth. Mm. Okay? If someone says only America exists, France doesn't exist, and there's no people over there, we all will say, ha, 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 that is stupid. Mm. But we're willing to accept that in a solar system where we have planets, there's no life that exists in them. Mm. And we have bought into the theory that there, there are no other, all these planets have gone kaput, they can't have life in there. It's all like lifeless, blah, 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 blah. Who are hmm. we? God? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but uh, ours is supposed to be the only Goldilocks planet, as they say, right? Neither too hot, neither too cold. Kind of See, there's, there's, there's... You don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, we, I think, I think what it is, is like truth will be constantly evolving. Truth okay. is not where we are right now. There's only one absolute truth, and the one absolute truth is we're sovereign being. Hmm. Okay, so everything else is today. Whatever I'm, I'm uncovering is one peel of the onion, hmm. because I need to understand where my frequency is at this moment. Hmm. Until I uncover that layer, I, I'm not ready for the truth that is next. Hmm. We can't literally go from zero frequency to a thousand hertz frequency. It's just not possible. Right. You know, 
some people have Kundalini awakening and they're able to withstand and somehow they come out of it and they're able to accelerate it. Hmm. But here's where we are at this time. The acceleration is much quicker. Right, right. We don't have time. The querying age, as they call it, right? Yeah, it, it, right now, the good and bad news is either you get on the ship or you don't. Okay. So what I'm saying is there, I have a feeling, forget about the universe, forget hmm. about the galaxy. Hmm. I am saying that there is a good possibility hmm. that they are either beings that lived on the, in the solar system or are living in the solar system. Hmm. I'm just uh, reading something that says, the moon that Jupiter has, yeah, uh, IAE something, I can't remember. Mm. Mm. They're saying it's not even a moon. It was placed in the orbit. Mm. If someone can place an entire object on the orbit, mm. okay, that's, I can't even comprehend that if you think about it. Yeah, so uh, in our uh, earlier conversations before, the, before this podcast, we talked about... Uh, uh, your uh, interactions with extraterrestrials or mm-hmm. out of these world people. Mm-hmm. So I want to develop a little bit on that because I'm I'm personally very interested in that, and I'm sure there must be a lot of people who are also interested. You, you want to know something funny? Huh? Look at yourself in the mirror. You are an extraterrestrial. Okay, you and I are. See, the yeah. thing is, we forget that we are that. Right. We are from ancient Lemuria and ancient Atlantis. Ancient mm. Lemuria stretched from the coast of Australia all through, you know, uh, the islands of like Guinea. If you take Philippines and uh, Vietnam and you come, you know, into India and it stretched all into Africa. Mm. And Atlantis was very similar. Mm. Ancient Lemurians and ancient Atlantis live the thriving world. Why do you... So here's the perception I'm getting from all the material I'm gathering. Mm. We wear that thriving community. Mm. We, we, that is why, you know, I want to, I want to, I, I want people to understand mm. how powerful we are. Mm. We don't, I, I, I accept my fellow brethren from another extraterrestrial to come and help me. Hmm. I take it with wholeheartedness hmm. because he is and she is part of my family. Hmm. But what I am saying is we too have the capacity. They will never come and help you unless you understand your own capacity to do that. Even if, even if, you, don't, even if you ask for it. You can ask for it. What I would say is tap into your own own expansiveness of what you can do. Okay. You can ask for help. That is immaterial. But right. understand that you, if you take your cell, it is memories of ancient Atlantis. It has memories of ancient Lemuria. It has memories of true abundance. True abundance. So from a channeling perspective, from, you know, hearing messages perspective, there is infiltration Mm. of other beings and forces. Mm. It seems very um, benign, Mm. but it has a flip side to it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back to Hinduism because that's where I come from, and I can talk about it freely than other religions. Right. If you take Hinduism, we take the Bhagavad Gita. No disrespect to Bhagavad Gita, but I'm questioning like any other religion. Arjuna Mm -hmm. says, go and kill because Mm -hmm. it's okay. You're going to be reborn. Do your duty. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you think about it, that's mind control. Mm -hmm. It is no different than the mind control that is happening today in the war. Mm -hmm. Arjuna is going to war and he's hesitant. I don't want to kill. And what does Krishna say? And we take that and we say, duty is the most important thing. Don't Mm. worry about whatever happens. No, we should be. Mm. And when you think duty is the most important thing, you create karma. Karma is not natural to a sovereign being. Mm. Karma is absolutely not natural to a sovereign being. Karma is a created concept. 
you know, through the limitation. So within the limitation, you're born, 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 born. So the reason I'm prefacing this conversation is, I myself have to stop, think, who is talking, who is giving me information. Mm. I've always been, irrespective of it, if you're a human being born on this earth, you have had infiltration. I don't care who you are, I don't care how enlightened you are. Mm. There has been infiltration, mm. okay? So I used to think there's something called the fifth dimension. Mm. I no longer believe in that concept. Mm -hmm. That is again a linear concept. So to make a long story short, I was writing, I was awakened uh, on the 9th of November. I was told I have another book coming up. I said, mm -hmm. all right. On the uh, 10th, so on the 9th, there was, you know, the lion came and told me. I said, okay. But on the 10th, it was mm -hmm. a completely different set of beings that were talking to me. Mm -hmm. And I could tell from the corner of my eye, not like physically looking, there were like a group of beings mm. that were talking to me. Mm. And I said, okay, I one of the things I never did is I never say, oh, I talk to Pleiadians or Turians or this or that. Mm. I am a sovereign being. I'm, I am one. I'm connected mm. to oneness. Any being that is one is part of who I am. Mm. Okay. So I've always maintained that because it's very important for me. Okay. Good and bad. Uh, no, only only love, only love. Oneness. Okay. When you're looking at oneness, there's only love. Love. Okay. Okay. Unconditional love. If you're in unconditional love and you're part of the one, that's fine. So there's no duality then. If you're un in unconditional love. There's no duality. So what I do is I literally I people say, how do you know this is right or wrong? I say I don't. Because then you're giving something that is an absolute. Right. You know what I mean? I myself, I'm still sort of evolving. I'm an evolving being. So I can't give you the absolute truth other than we are one. So I mm. say anything I do, I sit in a space of unconditional love. So let's mm. say something is infiltrating. If my intention is unconditional love, they can't stay for a long time. Mm. And their message, literally because I'm staying in unconditional love, will project that unconditional love in whatever I am writing. So mm. at 11, 11, I didn't know it was 11, 11. Mm. I started writing and it was very different from everything I had ever written. Mm. It came at such a fast pace. The minute I put my finger, mm. I started typing really fast. Mm. I mean, super fast. And I'm like getting words, you know, that I have never heard or paid heed to. Mm. And I'm like, what the hell is happening here? And then I heard, okay, you're going to be downloading 11 codes. Fast forward, December 22nd, I finished the book and I knew I had to start writing about the codes and I was in trepidation because mm. I'm like, I don't know how to download codes. Mm. And the only thing I know is because I come from an IT background, I said, oh, you know what? They said, you're going to be downloading metadata. I'm like, I don't know what metadata is. And I was like, I paused and I said, I know what metadata is from the perspective of an IT background mm. and you know it, it a long time ago when you know discs were hard disks were very expensive we used metadata that's all I said and I mm. started downloading this. pages and pages mm. and each symbol is different from the other everything each, is different yeah it's all unique yeah they're very unique almost like letters to an alphabet right yeah, so what happened is, what's interesting about this is, which I didn't know at the time. So I also don't cross-reference my work to keep up with the purity of it, because if I cross-reference and I'm doubting my channel. So when I started, it came like this, and I didn't know what it was. And one of my physicist friend, I showed it to him, and he, saw it, he said, oh, it's light language. I'm like, oh. okay. So I went to just literally, just, just to understand, I looked at it, some of the... Uh, alphabets here are in fact light language. But here's a funny thing. I don't think they came here to give me light language. Mm. It exists already. You don't need mm. another person to write light language that already exists. Right. And then it evolved into something like this. This is not light language. Right. Okay. So basically, there's one thing I will talk here. So they talked about a word called metatones. When mm. I heard it, 
I knew it existed. Mm. Because if you, some words when you hear, like, oh, that doesn't, I did, I never heard of the word, but when I heard the word, I'm like, I know this word exists somewhere in the English language. Mm. So the metatones are the universal tones that mm. you, when you are your sovereign being and in your oneness, it's a vibration that you can hear from the universe in the forest light. So I'm going to quickly show this. Okay. Okay. So basically what they are is they are, we're, we're so disconnected that we don't pay heed to the metatones. Mm. Okay. Either we don't have time, we're too busy, or we're disconnected, we're walking through a park, we don't hear the, the bird that's singing or the river that's flowing, right? Mm. These metatones, what they happen is they're, they are a combination of metatones and light language uh, and uh, musical tones, okay? Most of my work is Fibonacci series. Mm. Straight lines Fibonacci series, almost 90 per, 95% of my work is Fibonacci series. Okay. I could say even more, but I, I can't remember it. I can okay. see that. Yeah. Yeah. So the uh, so what what I am being told is that it's a combination of the metatones and the light language together. Mm. Mm. Okay. So what we're trying to do is you you're trying to heal yourself with just light or just metatones mm. by combining it. You're mm. causing instantaneous healing. So when people are trying to listen to harmonics, they get distracted. But what this is doing is, the minute you see it, you're like, whoa. You know what I mean? You're, it's trying to grab your attention immediately. Otherwise, you have to use your mind. The whole thing that has been done with this is to not use your mind. So I have had... Your mind, my mind, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but by your mind, you're talking about intelligence or you're talking about the mind? Intelligence as in logic. See, there's two kinds of intelligence. Right. One is the innate intelligence and then right. your mind intelligence, right? Right, right. What this is, it's invoking your innate intelligence. Innate intelligence, yeah. yeah. So when you look at it, so here's a funny thing, right? I've heard people come and do this work. All of a sudden, they have chakras opening up, you know, all kinds of body vibration. For me, nothing happens. Mm. You would think like every time I, I draw, draw this, uh, my heart, uh, like my heart chakra is like vibrating like crazy or my, you know, that doesn't happen for me. And I think that is by design because otherwise I wouldn't be able to do the artwork. So or, that, is it, is, or is it all part of the, the so-called new age, as you say? I don't think it's a new age because if I allowed the new age, then I wouldn't be able to. No, I'm, I'm talking about this heart chakra opening and all this. You know, some a, a lot of this is new age. I, I hate <laughs> to say it, you know, yeah. because it's almost like, you know, we, we want drugs to feel high. We yeah. want like, you know, alcohol to feel high. Now we need new age to feel high. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that so... Is, it's been a big turnoff for me right from the beginning because you have to feel everything. Right. What New Age movement does is, oh, you feel uh, angry, raise your frequency, raise your... No, the anger has to be felt in your cells so that they can get out of your system by trying to force it, by going into meditate. Oh, let me go and meditate for 10 seconds and just release this anger. No, because you, you have piled up anger, you have karmic anger, you just keep suppressing it and you create this building block that will never go away. Mm. So my whole, one of the things I have been very conscious about it, if I am pretty angry, guess mm. what? I'm going to mm. stay there mm. and observe it. I have become a great observer through my work. Mm. I sit, if I'm angry, I observe it. Does it mean mm. it's very great to observe? No, it is hard. You just want to, your natural state of being is, let me get out of it and go and do something so that I can forget it. No, just sit with it. Mm. What, I, what I see is the more we sit with that anger mm -hmm. and not judge it or not try to do something with it and just observe it, you will see that it passes through your system more quickly than mm. when you go and sit and start meditating because mm. allowance is a state of meditation. Mm. Say it again, please. Allowance is a state of meditation. Okay. Okay, so when you're not allowing yourself to be, you're talking about accepting you for who you are, and then you get angry, and then you don't want to be who you are. That is such a contradiction. Right. Yourself. 
you know, then that is not unconditional love. Oh, I'm so angry. I can't be angry. I'm so evolved. I'm so new agey. I'm so this. I'm so that. I've done so much work. All that is bull crap. Mm. So we need to experience us mm. to the fullest of that which we call dark and that which we call light. If we suppress the experience of dark, we cannot experience the light equally. Because in, a, in a duality world. Say again? In a dual world. Yes. Because your body has innate intelligence to dissolve that which appears. Hmm. But is not good for your existence as a sovereign being. That which does not belong to you can be dissolved by your body by the sheer allowance that you give for that experience. So the sovereign being, as I understand, is a net zero sum, right? Net zero. That it's, it's neither hot nor cold, anger, peace, war, nothing. It's Everything a neutral else is, place. It's a neutral it's, place. It's a place of neutrality. You know, yes. then you come all of a sudden to a point where your body naturally speaks into the intelligence and it brings you to the truth of what you need to know. Hmm. You know, and I used to think I'm this. And I all of a sudden in the last three months, I'm not that. You know, when you find out you're not that, it's like a huge, like, well, like, oh, mm. that's what I thought was the truth. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. The truth is no single person or no politician is going to come and save you. Mm. I don't care who you put on that chair. Mm. I don't care. It is yes. your, your and my responsibility and accountability to bring ourselves there. Mm. And I'm not saying neutrality is easy. I struggle with it. When you see something so huge, it kind of pushes you back like a thousand miles hour wind. Mm. You know, it just kind of shakes you up. Mm. But be there. When you are critiquing, don't try to suppress the criticism. Observe that you're critiquing. Observance is the absolute necessity to experience us as a sovereign being. Yeah, so when you talk about a mind and you, when you talk about this, how to what ex see when you talk about an individual as uh, my mind it's it's a kind of a localized consciousness right mm -hmm. when there is supposedly uh, universal consciousness there's many uh, i i remember one scientist said that there's only one mind and there are different faces that go through different people so universal just, consciousness is true but uh, see universal consciousness what we do is we we take universal i think because we are so much in physicality we take mm -hmm. universal consciousness and then we and try, try to define it we try to own it. Yeah, we define more define. because we, as where we are, with the two strands of DNA we have, we need everything to be defined. The minute we go into definition, we are limiting the expansive nature of something. Okay, so for example, I'll, I'll use the term metatone. I didn't know what a metatone is. And I'm like, okay, all these, I'm getting all these jibber jabber. I don't know what this is. So what I do is, I'm, when I get a work, I never go and do an uh, in-depth analysis because it interferes with my life. Mm. Okay? I just will Google just to see if the word exists. That's all mm. I do. Right. So what I did is I Googled and the word exists. Mm. And what I found was there was a one-line definition of metatone. Mm. Okay? And I have been given about seven or eight uh, terminologies, metastate, meta being. Um, uh, metaform, uh, metatones, and all kinds of things. Mm. One of my girlfriends calls me who read my book, mm -hmm. which is still in like paper form. Mm -hmm. She goes, Uma, the definition that they have given to you and what I found in the internet are nice. Mm. Yours is an, it goes so deep mm. into our being rather than staying on top of like what the definition no, But do we need the definition? We do. Because mm. when we starting to, like when I started having my awakening, I could not accept 
that I am unconditional love. I could not accept that God could love me unconditional. I was like, that's not possible. I, I don't like this person. I'm fighting with my mom. I'm arguing with my brother. Like, I can't be unconditionally loved because I need a definition for what unconditional love is. Hmm. I don't think we'll ever come up with that definition for unconditional love. The okay. reason is it is an experience. It's beyond words. It's beyond words and it's an experience. Yeah, yeah, I get experience it. Experience cannot be defined. I get that. So um, let's jump back to the, um, the, 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 the channel doc. So how does this all start off? You, you get a kind of a... Uh, there are millions of questions rushing in my head. Let me try and okay. prioritize them. Okay. <laughs> so, so how do you, do you get something like a, I mean, to use a very crude battle, is it like a telephone call and you answer it and yeah, I'm on the line now, pick up a paper and start. Mm -mm. See, uh. the thing about my thing is my guides know me so well. I mean, so well. Hmm. Uh, to a point, I think, the, well, the guides already know you. It's a question of you knowing the guide. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, what they say is, uh, what I've heard is you, uh, the, the guides are an integral part of you, you know? Okay. What I found is, uh, and I did uh, do a recent scientific research on my artwork, and what I concluded is they picked me because I'm so similar to their characters, if we may call that. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I am one of those people you give me a rigid thing, I can do it. If you say, this is how it needs to be done, I can do it. So if I, I'll, I'm a cook and I, I love cooking. If you give me a recipe, I'll never follow it. Mm -hmm. I'll kind of eye it. I'll take the elements that are very, that are a creative for my, oh, that's a new ingredient I want to try. That's it. Mm. So what happened is um, on December 23rd, I started drawing, uh, downloading all this, codes and it, there's about a thousand codes hmm. on december 29th i innately knew i hmm. had to go and get a notebook so hmm. anytime i do my work i don't meditate hmm. um i don't sit and center myself i bring myself as i am hmm. i don't try to fix myself before i get into my job hmm. i don't try to prepare for it. okay so what I do is, and it's not like this is what they taught me. Mm. It's how I have worked with it. Mm. Okay. So when I first started doing my writing, my arm will tingle, telling that I need to write. And mm. it still, I think, happens sometimes. I don't pay attention to it because it's become such an integral part of me. Mm. Uh, but with the drawing, it has been fascinating even for me because so on 29th, 29th morning, I, so literally I wake up. Just like any person, mm -hmm. if you go to work, how do you do? You go, you get a cup of coffee, you sit in front of your desk and you start working. That's exactly how I do. Mm. So I sat and I was like, just like, you know, drawing. But throughout the thing, it's like kind of like, you know, your, your mind interferes because you're in your physical form. You don't understand all this. Mm. I still, I've drawn about 300 images or more. Mm -hmm. Even today, I think it's my mind working. Mm. I, I don't have this. You know, I can't explain it, but there are moments of aha, you know, I, I'm mm. not going to disregard that. There's more moments of aha than the mind. Right. So uh, on the 29th, I said, I was sitting in the house and I said, you know what? Get up, go to the store, buy a white drawing notebook, pick up a black marker and draw because there, uh, I don't have those here. So basically I would start drawing straight lines and just like, I came home, I, did, I forgot my purse, <laughs> I had some cash, so somehow I was able to buy. I came home, was I, if I can remember, between one o'clock in the afternoon and two, I had drawn four to five diagrams. Mm. Literally just, just really fast. Mm. You know, just, I drew it and I looked at them and I'm like, oh my God, what are they? They all had a musical sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I kept drawing. And the next week, which was Jan 5th, uh, Jan something, okay? I, the days are so... Modern. That's okay. That's so the next Saturday, once, one Sunday I did it, the next Sunday, mm. I went to Blick. 
And I intuitively knew I had to buy a black paper, okay, and get a gold metallic pen. I, mm. Don't ask me how. Mm. I just knew it. Mm. I went and got it. I was, my first diagram was a tetrahedron. Okay, yeah. I, I didn't. So when I sit for an art, I have no idea what I'm going to draw. Mm. When I began this journey, I have absolutely no idea. I will sit, I will either take a ruler or, you know, the metallic paper. My hand will go, I'll put it. But here's what I want to make clear. People have asked me this question. Is someone working through you? No, I am very much present. 100%. Hmm. Okay? It's not like something is moving my hand. No. Hmm. So I, I put my scale and sometimes there will be a mistake that will happen. My hand will shake and the straight line will go a little crooked. That means you allow it. I'll be like, okay, I'll allow it. You know? And as I kept allowing it, and I embraced the mistakes. I embraced the mistakes like you cannot feel beat. And none that, that is the state of unconditional love. Hmm. That every mistake that I allowed brought me to miracles. I would finish the diagram and I'm like, oh, why did this? I was gonna do this line and like it just did this. And like, mm. I'm like, I finish it and I look and there's a masterpiece. <laughs> you know, I have never been that kind of a person who looks at my work and say, wow. I mm. looked at my own work and fell in love. Mm. And it kept evolving. Then I went and got a silver pen. Mm. And then I knew that I needed to get metallic and glitter and like it kept evolving and kept evolving. Many people come and ask me, how long does it take for you to do this? When I initially started, half an hour to 40 minutes, I was done with the time. Hmm. Now it takes me longer because I do a little bit more embellishments, you know, hmm. because the, 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 the amount of colors I use and, you know, everything, it is, it's evolving. Okay. Hmm. But what's interesting in this is my drawings were not exponential. Mm. It was a straight line. I was mm. here, I was here, I was here. It just kept going up this way. Mm. It didn't like, oh, gradually increase. And I was showing one of my um, paintings to uh, someone from Mexico and they looked at it and they said, you know, this is a, a style that is used in Mexico, the, the way you have colored this picture. And I'm like, what? Yeah. You know, so I really don't know. But recently, as part of the evolution, what's been happening is uh, once in a while, mm. very once in a while, mm. uh, actually, I can even say I, on two instances, mm. I just flashed the entire painting. Like, Oh. You know, like when you're when you're walking and you look at it, and then it's when you're in a bus, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're like going in the bus and you see something, and then it's gone. Right. Literally, very like you know, I'm like, oh, I got it, and then I have drawn. Now, once in a while, I'll give, for example, I'll, this is a great example. Um, when I so I I also get codes. So, for mm. example, you see this. This was mm. shown to me. Mm. That's all was shown to me. Hmm. Everything else just evolved. Okay. Okay, so mostly, sometimes I'll be just shown something. Sometimes I don't know what I'm coming to, but I could be angry at someone and I'll be drawing. I could be extremely happy while drawing. Hmm. I am. I was in India. Myself and my brother were having a huge argument. In the midst of an argument, I drew something and I looked up and I was like, it was beautiful. <laughs> so that means we don't need to try to suppress something before coming and doing our spiritual work. We right. have to accept who we are while we are in the process. And that gives me huge freedom. Huge yeah. freedom. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I recently someone asked, do you meditate before you draw? No. 
Nothing. I just show up. Mm -hmm. And any idea from where these... Uh, this, sounds, this question sounds silly, but I'll ask it nevertheless because many would want to know. Do you have any idea where these lights are from, which planet they are from, which... Uh, That's galaxy? a very good question. Uh, sorry, I didn't even let you finish. Um, so because I'm not one of those people, so for example, if I say this is from Pleiadian, everyone goes, oh, that's so Pleiadian. <laughs> if I say, oh, this is from Archer, oh my God, I am not one of those people. Right. Okay, and I'm not saying it's wrong. Then we are again creating separation, right? Then, right. you know, then I'm from India, you're American, like it doesn't work for me. So basically, there, have been, there has been a question that has been posed to them, and they said, we don't want to, it doesn't matter. And I said, mm. great. <laughs> I don't need to know either. Right. But, um, you know, have I had other visitors? Recently I've had. Mm -hmm. And I say, I look at them and I say, yeah, we'll talk. You know, I'm not one of those people that's going to be like, oh my God, they're here. I, I want to be prepared for it so that I can, in my fullness show up mm -hmm. rather than out of excitement that they're better than me. I never have it that my mm -hmm. life is better than me. I don't have it. Mm -hmm. But one thing I do know is they have something that is me in my full evolution. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's um, an, they, you, they are part of your uh, overall scheme of things. Exactly. I don't like, so for example, I, I don't believe in a guru system. Right. So I don't believe they are my guru because the minute I tell them they are my yeah. guru, they it's, go it's, a, it's, it's a power game. Yeah. It's a power game. I don't play the power game with them. Once yeah. in a while, so in November and December, I was, con it was 20, minus 21 degree Fahrenheit outside. I was constantly burning up. And they were, I was being woken up at like two in the morning and during three in the morning. I would have downloads of diagrams and I said, can't do it. Sorry. <laughs> Doesn't work for me. No, you know? no can do. <laughs> no can do. But you know what? I think I love them. And I think very recently I started drawing them. Uh -huh. And I didn't know it was then until I saw them recently. Uh, oh. They came to me in a dream very recently. They are extremely... They're like my painting, metallic white and metallic black. Uh -huh. if it, it's like you take a, if you take like a newspaper and you cut it into shapes, okay, and then you have bright metallic white and bright metallic, you know, that's the shape they were. And lo and behold, I just recently was looking at something like, wait, 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 that's them. You know, that's how they look like. So they, they do have a form. Part of them are from um, what I have um, uh, found out. I recently did a um, uh, scientific research. There was a controlled remote viewing that was done on the images. And the person who did the controlled remote viewing, um, for the purpose of, uh, you know, none, none of this work has really been shared with everybody. So at some point, I will share the names. I haven't. Um, worked out them, but they have, you know, mm -hmm. super confidential reasons. Yeah. The person who did the work was one of, it is one of the most known people for remote viewing. Mm -hmm. If not in America, in the world. Okay. okay. Uh, if not in the world, in America at least. So she did the work. She doesn't have any uh, concept of extraterrestrials, blah, blah, blah. She came, comes back and she's like, yeah, there are 10 people that came through. You know, okay. uh, some of them are in human form, a few in human form, and the rest are uh, extraterrestrials. And mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you, Nanda, even though I hear all this, I don't, like, know who they are. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's not mm -hmm. like, yes, I am sure this is who they are. Yes, I have absolutely talked to them. What I tell them is, listen, show up soon so that I can have even a better relationship with you guys. And then recently I said, you know what? If you're going to show up, I'll show up at your place. How about that? <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's yeah. like, who knows? You know? Yeah, like, like I told you earlier, right? That it's, uh, it's physically not possible to move from so many light years and still. So it's obviously some kind of quantum entanglement where, you know, it's a, it's a 
more a projection than anything else. Yeah, and and they could be here amongst us. You yeah, know. yeah, we, yeah we, Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. And, and what what I told them is, listen, I'm in physical form. Hmm. Until I am able to see you in physical form, it's really hard for me to believe that you exist. People yeah. can say all they want. Oh, they exist in soul and spirit. Blah blah blah. For me, I'm a physical person. I need to be able to touch, feel, and say you're here. Yeah. Other than you're a figment of my imagination, you know. You have so, to, yeah, yeah. Your tactile uh, senses have to tell you that they exist. Yeah. yeah, and I am one of those persons who's very touchy feeling. So don't exist somewhere and tell me that I <laughs> whatever you're giving me is right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I really. So well, and the funny thing is, um, as we were doing that reading, I was told that they're extremely funny. You know, but I am one of those people. I I'm not like, I'm not humorous, but I I'm like kind of like um, I have a once in a while I'll just release something that is like, you know, like make, poking fun at people, and uh -huh. I poke fun at myself. So I see that they have an element of that, and then that leads me to think. Then is it me? <laughs> you know, I have no idea. But one thing I can tell you is I've never drawn in my life. I'm not an artist. The only thing that I can think of from the perspective of something that was really, um, I could call myself an artist of my biology record from 12th grade, mm. which I did it with a passion. Mm. You know, I never have held a brush. I don't know how to hold a brush. And every single artistic material I have today at my home was intuitively brought to me. Mm. I didn't go looking for what is there. I intuitively, I would look at something, that's what I need. Okay, colors, this is what I need. And the, the colors and the metatones together are creating the healing. But, you know, before we go, I do want to talk about the healing aspect of this. Mm -hmm. This particular image caused, creates portals, multiple portals. So when you multiple what portals. Oh, portals okay yeah portals. so basically let's say so these images are not like oh i like this image so let me buy and blah blah no that's not how it works. Hmm. it's not to create wealth hmm. if it creates wealth it will be focused upon something that is for the healing of humanity hmm. it is not going to be like you're going to find me in a half a million dollar, you know, car driving around. That is not the purpose of it. If right. that happens, know that someone gifted it to me. <laughs> 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 but um, the, the point of these diagrams are, truly when you take it in and the image will speak to you, your chakra will vibrate or you'll have a strong emotion with it. And then as you sit with that particular image, it just keeps opening up, keeps opening up, and keeps opening up. And I have had two people have Kundalini awakening. I've not. <laughs> I've heard people, or maybe I am having it, and I don't know. You know, maybe it's already done. Or maybe and dusted. <laughs> if anybody had a smooth setting of a Kundalini awakening, that would be me, because I have no idea. Because I've heard Kundalini awakening is not easy. But I did right. go through a period between November and almost until February where I was just hot at the time. I would go out to minus 21 degrees and I'll be opening my jacket, you know, and I'm one of those people who is constantly cold. So right. that did happen to me. And I have had my first chakra vibrating for the last six to seven months. And it's just the buzz that's always there. So I don't really delve into it and just start like Googling stuff. I just like, okay. Mm. There's, there's these images are multi-purpose. So when okay. people are looking at it, they really have to, you know, like one of the things people get into in their head is like, they'll look at it. Don't use your brain to look at these images. Sure. Don't try to analyze them. Don't try to don't find a reason. Don't try to analyze them. Yeah. Listen to your body, how it's reacting. Yeah. And the highest reaction is the image that you need to pick in order to work with. Right. Okay. Or you could also take something that's the lowest reaction. It doesn't matter, but yeah. it has to be something your body is telling you, not your mind is telling you. Right. And so right now I'm in the process of 
uh, printing them. Mm -hmm. I, it, I've had a hard time with like getting the prints going. Mm -hmm. I just, today I'll get my first, you know, print. Mm -hmm. um, and I am looking to, before the, the challenging thing about these images is like, you can't just sell them because right. people really need to feel the process. If they take an image that is not for their well-being, I have a feeling, I'm not going to say it's true, that may not, it may not serve them. Right. So, the, for example, people will go into their head and say, oh, that is my healing color. No, that's your brain. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is my, um, what, uh, totem animal. No, still your brain. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, this is my guides. This is how they show for me. Still your brain. Mm -hmm. Listen to your body. Go into that sovereignness. Trust your body to be your guide. Mm -hmm. Listen to the vibrations within your body. So I also am very careful that it doesn't, people don't pick the wrong art. Right, okay? right. And also, like, it's not used for a wrong purpose. It's, it may decorate your home, but that's not the purpose of it. Its purpose is healing. So right. working on it, I'll give you about 10 images to put it on your, uh, wherever you want to post it. Yeah, that's, that's why I was wondering. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And if people want to print or have the image, they can call me. I can, yeah. Best way is to email me. Okay. Um, and they can reach out to me, and, and if they want to have a session with me, they can have a session with me. Yes, yes. The best way to do the uh, uh, session is in person. That's mm -hmm. what I would recommend, but not everybody lives in Chicago. So yes. I can go through it on the um, uh, uh, phone. It's mm -hmm. about an hour, hour and a half session. Mm -hmm. I will not do after an hour and a half because my body cannot do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the massive, an hour and a half is stretching it. Right. 15 minutes to an hour is when I can do it. The 30 minutes is to just answer some questions. Okay. So that is, that, that's a limitation. And I'm happy with it because my body has to uh, deal with it as well. Okay. And one of the things is I can't talk for long periods of time unless it's a very, uh, like this kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. It drains me to just sit and chit chat. So I don't chit chat anymore. Mm -hmm. so people are just looking for chit chat. It doesn't happen with me and they, they can't take it personally. Understand. So I'll put this all down, and uh, it's been great speaking with you, uh, Uma. It's, no, no, it, you know, I'm glad this happened. You have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea. I, you know, my thing is to help humanity, um, and whoever is ready for this. And before we go, I'm going to tell one thing: mm. this work is not for the faint-hearted. If you're mm. looking to post along or just have a small experience, this is not for you. If you're looking to have a breakthrough and looking into a Kundalini awakening kind of an experience, this is for you. Don't expect it to happen overnight. It may happen overnight, uh, but unless you're, not, uh, unless you're ready for it, I'm not the right person to do. You may have to do some other work before you get to. Okay? Understand. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Nanda. I hope... You'll call, call me later or, you know, we'll yeah, let, yeah. let's yeah, touch absolutely. It. Yeah, let's we touch it another time. Okay? Sure, okay. Sounds good. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye.